now we're recording. <laughs> we are doing it. We are doing it. We are doing right. it. Uh, where are you at right now, by the way? East Coast, in, West Coast? I'm in Denver, Colorado. You are in Denver so. right now. How long yeah. have you been there? Just for shows uh, right now? No, I've been living here for three years Oh, now. wow. Three yeah. years now. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah. so I know you went from Minnesota to California. When did when did Colorado? So you said three years. Uh, why the move? Uh, well, I met a lady and uh, fell in love, and then she got a job out here in Denver. So came out here for a while, and I've you been coming out. To, in. Yeah, I've been coming out to Denver for years doing shows. I've always yeah. really liked it, and then I got hired at Comedy Works and stuff. Oh wow, so, which is a there really good go. club out here. Yeah, yeah so. man, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, when you made the move from Minnesota to California, at first was that strictly comedy driven? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Basically. <laughs> what is? I have uh, a brother that lives out there too. Oh, so. there you go. Well, that helps. So, was yeah. uh, what was the hardest part about leaving home to to head out there? I mean, did you have did you have an idea as to what the plan was gonna be, or did you kind of just go there and then just kind of figure it out? Um. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of figured it out. I mean, I, you know, before I had moved from Minneapolis, I was on the road doing stand up mm. for seven, eight years where, wow. I, you know, I was gone most of the time anyway. So, um, you know, and I still go back to Minneapolis yeah. quite a bit. I'm there at the end of this, at the end of August. I'm That's doing right. another re yeah. release show there. Um, so I actually still have a room there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just never feel like I'm too far removed from anywhere, really. You know, yeah. I'm I'm going to LA again in a couple of weeks, and um, so you're always on the move. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I listen to uh, I listen to both the records that you have out. Um, I love them, but I, oh, I've come to cool, this. Uh, I've I've garnered this realization that uh, based on what's in it, you could tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, that the formative years, let's say kindergarten through eighth grade. We're, we're, uh, we're rough. Am I right? A lot of anxiety, um, a lot of, uh, you know, just <laughs> discovery, figuring out who you are. Sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. If, yeah. I don't know if rough is necessarily how I would describe it. I mean, I had a, a good childhood mm -hmm. as far as, you know, just my family and stuff, but yeah, school was hard. That's what I, I'm, that that's was what hard. I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, I just, I, they've tried to put me in that one size fits all one glove fits all type of public education you know right. it doesn't and, work and at that time they didn't you know they there was no such thing as like anxiety IEPs. disorders or like it was all just you know you're either like dumb <laughs> or uh or smart they didn't really have you know they tried to have this whole thing with like add and stuff right but i don't oh know, I know. i'm not even yeah i'm not even sure if that's what well, was going on for me i think it was more just learning how to deal with anxiety right yeah so. no that's me i mean I, I could relate to that thoroughly i mean it was like yeah i mean it's different for you probably i mean how, how old are you right now i'm 40 i just turned 40 yeah a little different i'm 25 so uh, uh i mean when i came through i mean we had a little bit more uh a little bit more help individual education plans things like that to kind of help us back then it's like fuck it you're on your own yeah you're just doing yeah. it yeah we're going to put you in the weird people classes. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> we're going to separate you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's you, a good thing for you. Here's something for your anxiety. We're going to put you with a group yeah, of kids with and it. everyone's going to see it. Let me know if it works. <laughs> <laughs> were you into uh, the arts? Were you creative mind as a kid? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I I used to be in this thing. This is another thing. It's like, I don't think that I had like attention deficit order. I just didn't, I just couldn't fit into that eight hour yeah. structure. But I wasn't like, you ever heard of Odyssey of the Mind? I have not. Inform me. It was like this thing. It was like a competition-based thing where you had a team from your town or school or whatever. And it was like, a you had to like create a play. You had to like write a play based on whatever thing they gave you or theme mm -hmm. they gave you. And then they had other like competition things like uh, mind games, basically. Team mind games that you had hmm. to play. They had a big like big like uh competition convention thing in this big stadium and stuff it was pretty fun yeah yeah that's what you latched on to that kind of thing yeah i played sports a lot too my dad oh, yeah. is 
Yeah, my dad was a basketball, a college basketball coach. So really? I, wow. Yeah, I played, I played a lot of basketball when I was younger and stuff like that. So. That's crazy. You, you never, yeah. never thought about taking it to that next step. No, I mean, I was, I was okay. Like I, I played in high school and stuff, but my own dad didn't recruit me to play in college, so I figured mm. that was. Pretty I think good that sign. was a sign. Yeah, pretty good <laughs> yeah, sign. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm not was... very big. So. Yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah, I guess. I mean, there's a lot of not very big people who turned out quite well. Uh, I mean, shorter like Nate Robinson, right? I mean, he's not yeah. even six feet. But uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, that's but crazy. they were also really athletic. Which oh I'm... yeah, Minnesota. I mean, they got good basketball up there. Like uh, I think Tyus Jones is from up there. Apple. I actually. Apple Valley. I actually um, is, I think. grew up in Wisconsin. So. Oh, Wisconsin. And then I moved to Minneapolis when I was yes. twenty or something. So. What sparked that move? School. I went to grad school. Oh wow! Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. What was the comedy scene like up there in uh, Minnesota at that time? Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I really? mean, even at, well, at that time, maybe when we were kind of Minneapolis had a really good scene, and then the '90s boom happened, and then mm-hmm. that whole thing kind of died off, and then so then we were kind of the next group to kind of get it going, and now it's that scenes. Yeah, that scenes amazing. Yeah, I mean, for Ac- sure. Acme and comedy That's companies. Huge. Yeah, it's, I'm actually there. Just on starting Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's um, awesome. But yeah, that's a cool place. Like we, you know, a lot of like do it yourself type of uh, DIY stuff. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of like, we started our own shows. Whoops, started our own clubs, and um, you know, just kind of built it our own in our own way. It was pretty cool. I mean, and it's 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 thriving now. That's so. awesome, and it's still very DIY in that sense too. It's just a self driven type of community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of indie shows there, and there's, awesome. there's a club. There's a couple of clubs that are basically just run by comics that are like really good clubs that get national acts and stuff. So that's yeah, crazy, cool. man. Who were the guys for you when you started coming up that uh, you know were in that circle? Any of them still sticking around? Oh sure, yeah. There's a lot of guys. Um, Cy Amundsen was around then, and uh, Chad Daniels. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, I know Chad. Mary Mack. Um, hmm. Tim Harmston, yeah, there's some, there's some people. guys. I'm probably missing somebody. Pete Lee. I'm sure you're. Oh yeah, he just uh, he just had a special drop on HBO, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, very funny dude. Very funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bunch of guys. Yeah. Um, I think who's who's the big cat now? I mean, there's, there's some lot. people. Yeah, Ali Salton's. He's coming. Uh, he just got a Tonight Show. He's out of there. Um, yeah, what's cool about Minneapolis too is there's a huge, you know, the uh, a big African immigrant population in Minneapolis. They have like there's at one point there was more Somalians living in Minneapolis than there were living wow. in Somalia. Yeah, yeah. So um, why do you think that is? I mean, that's just such a I think strange it's something to do. Location. Yeah, it has something to do with the Lutheran Church and hmm. and uh, missionary work, I guess. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, they a lot. I think I could be wrong about that, yeah. but I think so. There's a big like Ethiopian population and and uh, some other African uh, immigrant stuff. So what I'm why I'm bringing that up is that it's cool happening in Minneapolis is that now that there's been like a, a generation or two of those immigrants in Minneapolis, mm-hmm. there's younger people, you know, younger African immigrants that are doing stand up in right. Minneapolis who've started doing stand up and and that's really given it like a pretty interesting cool like wrinkle within that scene yeah, which would used to be just you know the liliest of the whitest yeah. <laughs> comedy scene so it's cool awesome. it's cool to have have that you know there's some guy like I'll, i mentioned dolly sultan but there's uh another guy ahmad kalaf who's really funny i'm gonna have uh, to check all these people out that's crazy yeah ahmed's uh he's he's somalian so yeah it's wow. cool man yeah, that's it's nuts fun. i know for music too i think uh js and daria I think he's uh, he migrated there. I don't know where he's from. He's a singer yeah, songwriter. Yeah. He moved okay, to cool. Minneapolis. I think he's from. Uh, I think he actually moved from Africa. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That that's crazy. He moved there just because Bob Dylan, you know, got his start there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty incredible. But uh, when you started, I mean, when did you get the comedy bug for you? I mean, how'd you? When did you start cutting your teeth? Where where, where was uh, home base for you per se, as far as the club goes? Yeah, Minneapolis. I started my first set that I ever did. I did at an open mic at Acme. Um, oh wow! That was the first time I was it's ever a big on stage. spot. Yeah, it was fun. Man. I was yeah, it was cool. I actually had a pretty good set the first time, and then they put me on again the following week. Didn't work I, out. 
yeah. bombed so bad. <laughs> yeah. And I think I bombed for at least two years after that. And then really? I finally kept started going, to get though. going. Oh, yeah. How'd you, how'd you, I mean, how do you keep going after that? I mean, for two straight years? I mean. Yeah. I mean, I had my, my older brother, my oldest brother, um, had done stand up in Chicago um, oh. for about, I think he probably did it over 10 years. He was doing stand up. Okay. He, he wouldn't quite. Get, I mean, he had a job, at the, mm-hmm. like a real job still going on. So he was still kind of like just doing it as, as more of a hobby. But he right. definitely was able to uh, kind of guide me in the sense of like letting me know how it was going to kind of work. I think I probably would have been discouraged a lot easier really? earlier on if I didn't have somebody that was like, huh. yeah, this takes time. You know, you just got to learn how to do this. And Interesting. Um, yeah, and I, I, I loved it from the start so i mean even though it was hard but i uh and then i got into acne school and stuff too that really helped sure um, yeah, yeah yeah so like improv and stuff you do that too then yeah i mean i'm not not at like a you know a professional level or anything mm-hmm. but i do i've taken improv classes and stuff in acting classes i think both of those things really help yeah repetition of anything in that sense i mean is going to help yeah. even if you're not yeah. in it just by way of doing it eventually it's gonna it's gonna pan out i think uh so your brother probably knew Nate Bargatze at the time because it, if he was in Chicago, because I know Nate got his start in Chicago in like early 2000s, 2002. Yeah, I think that's right around when my brother probably stopped. My brother was right. around the era of, he's a lot older than I am, so he's around the era of like Jimmy Pardo was a big Chicago comic yeah. then. Damon Williams? Uh, who? Damon Williams. Yeah, that I don't know if you knew him. Hmm, um, Graham, El- Graham Elwood's another one that he was close with. Wow, so he um, kind of handed the torch off to you per se. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it got me. It it, it helped me understand, you know, the process of of how that was gonna work out, you know. And um, right. but I was a big fan of stand up even before that. Even when I was a kid, I I really liked the art form. I used to watch it. Any chance I got, I would watch it. You know, your it didn't guys? matter who who it was. I watched everybody. Um, well, when I was really, I remember like my first uh, memories of like really enjoying stand-up I, I must have been like 10 11 wow. maybe and it was gallagher i remember oh, man, being like crazy i remember being like a kid and just lo- thinking gallagher was like the you know funniest thing i've ever seen somebody smashing shit on stage yeah it made no uh, sense giant was, couch yeah, trampoline thing and yeah um but then you know uh my taste kind of you know your pal uh, evolved yeah. from there <laughs> yeah I, I i remember really being in it being young too maybe being in high school and really liking bill hicks mm. and um oh yeah he's great yeah and then i really got into uh what's his name um brian regan he has oh, some really good man, specials he's amazing. Younger, yeah. yeah seinfeld and stuff like pretty much anybody carlin um mm. i used to just watch all the comedy central half hours or that's what Whatever I did. They put out. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. see, the thing is, for me, is like I'm not. I'm just a big fan of it. So, like, I that's that's me. It's just a huge fan of it. Uh, I mean, I've watched almost all the all the seasons of it. I mean, almost all of them. I got Paramount Plus. You can watch literally like all of them. It's amazing. But yeah, that's I mean, cool. it's uh, it is. Is that a real? Is that a real background behind you? It is not. It is I not. Can tell. It is, I was wondering. It's, it's so weird. Some people, okay, some people ask. Okay. I wish it was. I wish it was a real pallet of wood. What's what's back there? What's, it what's is a green actually screen. back there? It is a green oh, screen. It's it green is a green screen. screen. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I wish it was the real background. So you can put uh, anything back there? Anything back there, man. Mm-hmm. I just do it to hide the hide the stuff. There's nothing in here, but it's just a room. <laughs> But uh, I think you should put a golf course behind you because you got a very much uh, Tiger Woods vibe I, going today. Yeah, I mean a little bit. <laughs> I love golf too. I mean, are you into that? Did you know that I love I I love golf so much, man. I play so much golf. It's crazy. I did that last summer, but now like everything's opened up again. Prices are a lot because a lot of the courses last year the prices weren't that. Yeah, the green fees weren't as much because it's like, hey, if you want to come out of the house, enjoy yeah. the pandemic. Are you broke? We'll make it cheaper. Now it's, everything's <laughs> open. I was like, oh god. Where, where are you? Where are you living at? Suits and everything. Uh, we are. I in St. Charles, South Elgin area, about thirty minutes from downtown Chicago. So we got some nice courses over here. We got Medina, cool, uh, less than twenty minutes away. Obviously, that's private, but it's a beautiful yeah. course. I've been there once. A friend of mine uh nice. is a member so he's gonna try to keep him as a friend 
forever yeah and, there you go yeah. But, uh, yeah but yeah man i i like it so usually when you're on the road then you bring your clubs i try to I, you know it, it kind of can be difficult you know if you don't have yeah. a car when you're on the road or, you know if i'm driving somewhere i'll definitely bring them i don't really sure. like to fly with i don't really mess with that but yeah i've never done uh, that yeah i've done it a couple of times it's mm-hmm. it's a, if i'm gonna if i'm gonna be able to play twice Mm-hmm. you know then, then i think it's worth it but just to fly i mean it's 60 bucks to fly your clubs and yeah, then crazy. dragging them all around and yeah. yeah i'm not that good to where i would even consider it i mean i broke 90 once and that was like the best day of my life nice but, man uh, yeah i should yeah. I, i've only well i didn't play i used to work at a course when i was young mm-hmm. and then i didn't play forever and i just started playing basically during the pandemic and yeah uh, i think a lot of people did yeah, it's fun. I'm in a league now and everything. So. Oh, really? Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah I can't. Fun. I can't do that. It's just, I'm, I'm a hack, man. I'm an absolute hack. Oh, no, you you could play in our league for sure. I mean, there's some really good players, but really? there's some, it's all a wide range, you know? Yeah, it's just all about the fun, usually. Mm-hmm. But uh, it pisses me off, though, right? Like, you get off the course and you see this old man, retired, walking a little slow. Like, Bob, what'd you shoot today? Well, got a 78. Not mm. too happy with it. I'm like, what? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. crazy. But uh, now you've been, uh, how long after you started doing doing comedy did you start actually getting your own, you know, paid gigs? You started featuring, you started headlining. How how, how long after uh, that first couple, that first mic? Yeah, probably about three, two, two to three years, somewhere around uh, there. For yeah. context purposes, what year is it at that time? Oh, man, what year would it have been? 2006. Wow. Yeah, 2006. That's crazy. And then 10 years. Well, I started in 2006. So that probably took me until 2000, I don't know, 2008 or nine, somewhere in there. Wow, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. And then uh, eight years from that, you get on Conan. I mean, that's, that is, uh, how did, from, from the first, you know, feature headline, you know spots that you had it was it at that time then you started to tour the country or were you doing that beforehand well i'm sorry what do you say that again when you first got your first paid your paid spot your first Mm -hmm. uh paid spot um once that happened did you then start hitting the road were you hitting the road before that doing doing mics across the country oh i see uh yeah a little bit i mean yeah maybe not so much going out on the road Mm -hmm. until i started getting paid gigs but when i started to feel like i had enough material and could like handle up you know a paid spot i did start going i started going to travel down to chicago i would go to madison or milwaukee right um des moines you know all all the places kind of within driving distance of minneapolis to do i would just go try to do guest sets and stuff Mm -hmm. at clubs to try to get in front of their bookers and see if they I could get work that way, right. you know? Um, yeah, I did That's that awesome. a lot. That's crazy. Yeah. Those first few years on the road is just, I mean, I was just living in my car more, more or less. I mean, was just yeah. driving everywhere. Yeah. I just loved it that much though. I mean, that's just crazy to me like that. I think it's awesome, but was, there was not, there was no backup plan for you. I mean, was this, you were set, this is what you wanted to do, huh? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, to me, it was always like, an adventure you know i like right i really got into some of the beatnik writers and stuff when i was around that age and like just the idea of being on the road and mm-hmm. traveling and um that just it was a very romantic thing for me sure absolutely yeah. one thing uh i've noticed with uh a lot of your stuff is you tend to kind of incorporate the crowd a lot more than most it seems like in some of your stuff and i love it uh I mean, I think that you're very, I think it's being observational and sticking to what you do best is, uh, is hard. Like Sam Morrell does, it, he could do that too. There's not yeah. many people who really, I mean, he'll spot someone out in the back, you know, corner of a room. Mm-hmm. No, nobody else may ever see that, but he'll incorporate yeah. that in his show and riff off that. And I mean, do something killer you you're very similar in that sense was that always the way for you when you started no, or is no. that something <laughs> not when i started no. yeah when yeah did that, that come that, to the picture that's just more of like performing every night yeah. <laughs> performing every night and being sick of your material and and then starting to kind of figure out like how to use those in the moment moments to kind of intertwine them sure. with the material written i think i mean that's kind of like an advanced thing you know it takes for me it was anyway it takes 
takes a while to to get comfortable enough to do that. So when mm. I was first doing comedy, it was very ABC, very like, okay, this is I do this joke and then I do sure. this joke and then I do this, joke. and it's very kind of um, very structured. Yeah, structured and and kind of memorized. And now mm. it's now it's more like I don't really write jokes down really Really? just kind of Hmm. put like one word down you know and then that's kind of the i know like that's the general topic that i'm and i kind of know where the punchline is but i can get in and out of it in different ways that's crazy so you're not much of a writer you just you literally could write one word and then know the structure it's just it's just yeah i mean it's i mean it's it's a lot of like doing it you know so i'll have an mm-hmm. idea like a like a you know like a, this newer bit that i have is about um guys that ride motorcycles that are really loud around town you know mm-hmm. so i just write like motorcycle guys down and then mm-hmm. but in my head i've kind of like gone over you know what um, the angle i'm trying to get to or the punchline i'm getting to right. so i kind of know what that is but now it's like okay doing it over and over on stage i'll figure out i'll kind of like hammer out how to get into it and where i want to you know go from there so right. that just you know i'll put it into i'll put it into like a middle of a chunk that i know mm-hmm. i already know pretty good and then i'll just kind of slowly build into it no that's yeah. great that's crazy man so when did uh when when was the first time that didn't really go as planned when you tried to start to incorporate uh some of the you know the the crowd in, into the into the set did you ever have uh, a moment where that uh turned real bad real quick uh sure yeah i mean i don't really i don't know if i can really pinpoint i mean i've had bad sets yeah. <laughs> where, i think like, everyone has yeah but... where like nothing works but um i don't i don't really know if i can like pinpoint a specific mm. s- time or place you know it was all kind of very like fluid thing and it's all a very like gradual right sort of uh i mean i can't progression can't really yeah i can't really pay like okay i started doing this then right. you know what i mean yeah, it was yeah, more yeah. like over time sure yeah. yeah now uh i like i said you did conan 2016 how'd that come to be um i mean i've had i've, I've talked to a lot of people who've done conan a bunch of the late shows and stuff but i'm always fascinated as that process the finding out the getting to do it the experience uh and everything like that what was that mm-hmm. like for you yeah it was great i mean i um i was just i was in minneapolis no i was in la at that time i was actually right around the time i moved to la mm-hmm. so and it actually started kind of happening while i was still in minneapolis so it took a long time it was a about a year process so wow. rory rory scoval wow. had saw me and had recommended me to the through the booker that mm-hmm. books that show um jp buck his name is and wow. uh he ended up you know it took a little bit but he ended up watching my tape mm-hmm. um and it was a you know he had asked for like a half hour tape and then they, he kind of broke down what jokes he would thought that could work on the show mm-hmm. so then i started working on putting a set together with those bits and how to like transition in and out of right. them and then he, I had to send him a couple of tapes, you know, going back and wow, forth. Like, crazy. okay, could this, you know, how, how does this look? How, mm-hmm. you know, is this something that could work? And then eventually we narrowed it down to what he thought would work. And then, uh, you know, I just got a phone call one day and saying that you're going to be on the show in a week or whatever. And that's yeah. insane. That's crazy. Now you say, you know, they, they broke it down and they, they wanted to see, well, this will work. Maybe this won't work. What, what is it that they're breaking down? I mean, are they just trying to structure it in a way that would appeal to television without overstepping boundaries of, you know, what you can or can't say? I mean, yeah, pretty much. That's yeah, uncomfortable, I mean, right? I mean, it's not, yeah. I mean, as someone who's writing these originally to have something altered, I mean, is that, it's, it's weird, right? Yeah, it's weird. I, yeah, definitely. Um, and I don't think they, you know, I think like somebody like Bargatsky or like a Shane Moss who they've had on the show, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch. I think once you kind of got past that that first time or You're so, pretty I, sad. Think that, I think that, that they'll, you know, they're pretty, they're a little looser with, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they're not so hands-on. Um, sure. But I think since it was my television debut, they were pretty you know, okay, this is, these are the jokes we want to see basically. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 
That's crazy. So it was I, difficult. It made it hard for sure. Oh, absolutely. But. I mean, that's what a lot of the other people have said too. Um, I mean, they just felt like they weren't themselves. Like they just felt awkward up there, like stiff, like reading off of a teleprompter type of thing. Yeah, I've definitely. I mean, I, I think for me, it was a lot of nerves too. <laughs> Obviously, nervous. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I was hoping I would get to do it again because um, I just was too nervous. I mean, I was mm. fine, but I was just, you know, it was just it was nervous i think i would have been a lot less nervous if i got to do it again but i don't think you're the only one though yeah no no and uh i mean tv sets just in general are pretty difficult just because it's you know it's two in the afternoon it's a studio audience which is not a club you sure. know people are sober they're really far away from you that's just not ideal for the mm. art form but you know it's just the way it, it is but now is. conan conan stepped down so yeah so now you gotta i'll ever gonna get a chance on that show <laughs> yeah no that, that's crazy i think he'll come back at some form i don't know obviously i don't know what it would be maybe he creates his own medium maybe it's mm. something digitally streamed i have no clue but, i know he does uh, a podcast yeah he does i mean it's like yeah. a podcast network i think more of like oh, okay. team coco is like there's so many other people who like other podcasts who are part of that that network or it's weird. It's like a, a podcast network. Like Dean Del Rey, he has a podcast network now called the Cactus Network, where he has a bunch of people's podcasts and he mm. has them on his network. Like iHeartMedia right. has. Sure, uh, yeah. But yeah, like all that. I think that's what that, that is with him. But uh, when uh, have you been doing self booking the whole time? Or at what point did you, did you get a manager into the picture for you and uh, someone who took care of it for you on your own? Um, I mean, I've had a manager agent for a while hesitancy um, uh initially getting one was it what now was there any hesitancy at first uh having someone else kind of run the show or do you just well want someone i don't else to do i mean work? that's not really how it works i mean mm. you never really have anybody running it for mm. you it's kind of hard to explain like it they're kind of, i don't know it's you're still always kind of booking your own stuff mm. you're just for kind of bigger things sure. um and then like trying to get tv stuff they're kind of that's what they're kind of useful for yeah okay. um as far as like look they do some show booking mm -hmm. probably there's probably some comedians that have uh, a person that does you know that they trust that does more of it but mm -hmm. for me i i've kind of kept it in my corner for the most sure. part um yeah. just because i've just found it better that way um but mm, yeah interesting now I uh, like I said I know you have two records out now all of them very funny uh, the the next one the third one's coming out soon um, Friday when was that recorded I mean COVID pre COVID uh, I mean it's just being pushed on now when was that taped so it was initially supposed to be recorded right before well I had like we didn't obviously know that COVID was going to happen so yeah. yeah it got the initial recording got canceled because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So then I, once all that was going on and we had all this stuff going on, mm -hmm. you know, the stuff that was going on in Minneapolis. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. You were right that. in the middle of all this. Yeah. Stuff. So, um, then it wow. kind of changed the world changed. So I bit. needed to yeah. change what I was putting out. I wasn't, I didn't think that the album reflected what was really going on. And so I decided that I was going to push the album off until mm -hmm. I was able to reframe it and work on some new stuff to that was a little bit more you know in the times mm -hmm. and so then we ended up recording it started recording in april um at the philadelphia helium oh, and wow. then the last recording was done in portland um hmm. also at helium so I, it's at, it's through helium records which is Just where so. my podcast i have a podcast and i'm yeah. on there I'm on their podcast network, the Helium Presents Podcast Network, and awesome. uh, they have a record company. So that's who I'm with. And um, yeah, so we most of it was recorded in Portland hmm. uh, in May. So it was kind of right after wow. things started opening up again. That's crazy. So now what's the mentally, though, when all that stuff happened? I mean, here you are. You already had that hour. You already had this set. And then obviously the world just fell apart. Yeah. Uh, did that how'd that affect the the mindset doing a recording in general was there any thought of just you know what i'm not gonna not not now maybe a couple of years from now did that was there any real thought about pushing it off no, that much? not really just because i didn't 
you know, I already think that, I just think that the world is moving so fast mm -hmm. that material ages faster than it ever has. Sure. Yeah. Um, so for me, I was like, I want to get this out. It was a kind of a, a balance between wanting to get out, get it out as quickly as I could mm -hmm. and getting a big enough, you know, having enough people in the audience to be able right. to have an actual show. And then also, you know, we can safely do it. And then sure. also, um, you know, yeah, that, that's basically it. I mean, I just wanted, I just wanted to get it in, and, and, you know, it, it being the material being ready, you know, Absolutely. once I felt like, okay, I have it, I have it enough of this is, is in a place where I feel comfortable putting it out. Um, and, and I didn't want to wait, like I said, I just didn't want to wait that long. Cause I just don't mm -hmm. feel like, I think that an hour, a year from now, some of that material is not going to be as relevant or, um, you know, no, I got it. Good. It makes sense. Yeah. It, stand up doesn't age like in general, I don't think ages very well. I mean, you know, you, you put things in its time period with stand up. Generally. Know? Yeah. I mean that you're, it's all about experience you live and an experience. Yeah. So stuff like that. I mean, it's like the COVID stuff, like that stuff is uh, well over with as far as content goes. But when people are doing driving shows and stuff like that, that's mm. all relatable. But now it's like, ugh, no more. No yeah, more. Yeah. 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 I kind of feel that way too. So, I mean, I hope that the album will still, re you know, will be received well. It's not all COVID related, but mm -hmm. there's definitely some stuff in there. So, right. So where are you right now as far as, uh, uh, new stuff goes? I mean, with the album dropping this week, um, I mean, how, where are you at as far as, uh, set goes? You, you, you have <laughs> another hour 45 or <laughs> no, just no, working no. it out. Yeah, no, I have, I don't have much, honestly. I've kind of did a lot of work just to get that thing ready. And mm -hmm. I mean, I have some ideas. I have a few things that are, that I've done, but, um, yeah, it's going to be, I'm basically starting over. So, wow, that's crazy. So you got mm -hmm. a podcast. I know you, 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 you mentioned at the writer's block, uh, talk a little bit about that and how that came to be. Yeah, it's, um, it's changed. It's evolved now. We're slowly evolving it into the comedy mainline. Um, mm. But it started off as writer's block when the basic idea was, you know, I have this other comedian friend who's from Minneapolis, uh, Robert Burrell, very funny mm. guy who's always been helping me with my own stuff. He's a really good writer. Um, very good, like just structural ABC type of guy, mm. you know, and very good at that. And uh, I would call him and with ideas and we'd just riff about stuff. And then eventually we were like, yeah, let's make it. this make this yeah so make this into a show and then we were recording at ig live mm -hmm. and then we're like well let's just make it into a podcast well well helium reached out and asked us or asked me if we had any um podcast ideas mm -hmm. and if we did we should start with one with them so there we're like go. yeah let's let's do it and it's we liked it as writer's block it was very like structured in a way where we'd have a guest comedian that would give us bits that they were working on and we would work through the bits interesting on the recording and uh we just said it was fun and we thought it was cool and we, we felt like the episodes where we got silly and weird were the better episodes so then sure, we just usually are yeah started to open it up to this idea of comedy mainline which is uh we're taking phone calls so really? we, wow. we take phone calls from comedians that want to call in and talk about whatever they want to talk about and a lot of times it is just bits that they want to talk mm -hmm. about which is great and then we do it that way but then we also have other weird calls come in like we have people doing characters and um just all kinds of crazy shit so wow yeah, that's funny, comedy mainline man. super fun yeah yeah so we just had sam we just had sam talent on in our last episode it was really all, like we're really starting to figure out how to how we want this thing to go so we're about 30 episodes in so wow yeah. that's that's crazy so you got you got a lot of shows coming up uh you were with the 28th through 30th you're up you're you're back home right minnesota uh yeah this wednesday i'm doing acme let's see here acme uh starting wednesday uh, through mm -hmm. this so i'll be there from wednesday until saturday and then i'm coming back to the denver area and i'm doing a bunch of denver shows for all of august i've been traveling so much that i decided that i was going to stay home for august but i'm doing a bunch of shows in denver and uh, i'm going to la for a little bit in august but um wow and then uh, uh yeah i'll be sure to plug all that stuff too because i'm actually i'll drop this the day of the special i'll do that i'll drop on friday today. yeah cool i'll do that but uh again, yeah i can uh, give you uh i can give you a link too if yeah you wanna, man I, a link yeah, that's where to check people it out. can pick it up 
Yeah, so. definitely. I'll, I'll definitely put that uh, in there and stuff like that. But when uh, when you're in California, uh, what spots are you going to be at over there? I'm going to be doing um, – shit, where am I going to be? West Side Comedy Theater in Santa Monica is the place that I probably do the most when I'm out there, and that's what, I, that's what I'm doing hmm. on the 20th, August 20th. I'll be at the West Side Comedy Theater. And, uh, wow. Yeah. All that stuff's on your website too, I saw. I was looking. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, you yeah. got everything up there, so I'll direct all the people to go there to check you out. Well, cool. hey, uh, Steve, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, no problem, Christian. Thanks, man. I, uh, it was nice talking to you, dude. All right, take care, man. All right, take it easy. Bye.